Today's story is about two children who lived by the sea in the days of those tall ships with billowing white sails and had quite an adventure. Once, many years ago, there was a boy called Jack and a girl called Nancy. They lived with their father and mother in a cottage at the seaside. From the bedroom window, they could see the sailing ships at sea. Sometimes the sailors would tell them about the strange places they'd been to. Once a sailor showed them a parrot in a cage and told them about the jungle where it was always hot and where parrots flew about among the trees. I wish we could go there, said Jack. One day, Jack and Nancy went out for a walk on the cliffs. Nancy carried some buns and some apples in a handkerchief and Jack carried his father's big green umbrella. When they sat down to eat, they felt a few spots of rain and Jack put up the umbrella. At that moment, a great wind began to blow. Jack held on tight to the umbrella and Nancy held on to Jack. And then suddenly the wind blew so hard, they were blown into the air. Up they went, through the clouds. Until, at last, after a long time, they came out into clear sky. Slowly the wind dropped and the big green umbrella began to float down towards the island in the sea. Down they floated between tall trees. Flying about among the branches were parrots. Just like the ones the sailors had told them about. They landed on the ground with a bump. And when they looked up, there on top of the umbrella was a big parrot. Jack and Nancy set off through the jungle and the parrot went with them, sitting on the handle of the umbrella. Before long, they came to a little stream. In one place, the stream became a waterfall and they had to climb down over rocks to get to the bottom. In the end, they came to the sea. But there were no people and no ships to take them home. And so there they had to stay. Each morning, they ate fruit from the bushes and drank water from the stream. They swam in the sea with the fish. The water was quite warm. At night, they climbed onto a mossy branch and went to sleep. And every day they kept watch, hoping a ship would come. But days passed and no ship came to the island. We shall never see our home again, said Nancy. Then, one morning, there was a ship out at sea. Jack shouted, and Nancy shouted, and the parrot screamed. Oh, 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 oh. He made the most noise of all. The ship stopped, and some sailors got into a little boat and rowed towards the shore. They hadn't expected to see anyone on the island, and they were amazed when they heard how Jack and Nancy had got there. You must come on board ship with us, said one of the sailors. We'll take you back home. Jack and Nancy sailed home on the ship. For the meals, they had salt pork and very hard biscuits. The sailors sang sea shanties for them and showed them how to tie knots in pieces of rope. When they got back, the sailors rowed Jack and Nancy to the shore. Their father and mother were overjoyed to see them. And you can imagine how happy Jack and Nancy were, after all their adventures, to be safe home once again. What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning. Hooray and up she rises. Hooray and up she rises. Hooray and up she rises. Early in the morning. Ah, Captain, put him up in the crow's nest. Put him in the crow's nest till he's sober. Put him in the crow's nest till he's sober. Put him in the crow's nest till he's sober. Till he's sober. Early in the morning. Hooray and up she rises. Hooray and up she rises. Hooray and up she rises. Early in the morning. How you doing up there, Abel 
Don't seem an empty. Feeling any better? Ah, you soon will. Ooh, hooray, and up she rises. Hooray, and up she rises. Hooray, and up she rises early in the morning. Oh, this cardboard yacht. Hope it floats a bit better than Humpty's cardboard yacht, because cardboard is not always the best thing to float. It floats well at first, and then usually gets a little bit soggy. But it's floating okay now. What else floats? Oh, my paper yacht. Paper's always good to float. But again, after it's been in, in the water for a while, it might just sink. But not yet. Still some float left in that. All kinds of things float. Let me see. A lump of plasticine. You think that would float? Does plasticine float? Let's find out. Oh! Well, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Rather, depends on the shape. Here's a plasticine boat I've made. Do you think this might float? Hope so. There we go. A grand launching of the plasticine sailing boat. What else floats and doesn't? Well, there's corks. Corks should float. Yeah, put a sail in a cork and make a sailing boat like the yacht. That's made with a lollipop stick. And there's plastic milk bottle. That should float. Well, it will float when it's empty. But if it fills up with water, glug, 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 it may just sink like a sinking ship. Let's refloat it. Hooray, up she rises. Hooray, up she rises. Look, are you in there? Another message? Well, what it says. It's a tongue twister again. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells that she sells are seashells, I'm sure. Have you heard that one? See if you can say it with me. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells that she sells are seashells, I'm sure. She sells seashells on the seashore. Shells that she sells are seashells, I'm sure. It's a very difficult one, Cuckoo. You got any more for me? You know what this one is? Another sea one. A swan swam over the sea. Swim, swan, swim. Swan swam back again. Well, swan swam. Oh, it's all right. Have another go. Swan swam over the sea. Swim, swan, swim. Swan swam back again. Well, swan swam. Swim, swan, swim. Swan swam over the sea. Swim, swan, swim. Swan swam back again. Well, swan swam. I think it's time to tell the time, don't you? <laughs> Can you see what time it says on Cuckoo's clock today? The long hand's pointing straight up, so that means it's something o'clock and the shorthand's pointing to the number nine. So today the clock says nine o'clock. Now I think I'll send these tongue twisters off as a message in a bottle to trick someone else. It's time for us to go now. Goodbye. <laughs> you could try floating your own silver paper boat or anything. Goodbye. <laughs> You see Liz talking about a message in a bottle there on Play School, which was a hit for the police, and just by coincidence, it is Stuart Copeland's birthday today. And he is 35 years old, so happy birthday to you, Stuart. And Desmond Decker is was 46 today. And Desmond Decker had a song called The Israelites. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. I won't sing any more of that, don't panic.
Your birthdays for today, far more important. This one actually came to Philip, but never mind. On the 16th of July, please a happy birthday to my daughters. All these people, there's lots of them. Jane Horn, her friends Fiona Wilkie and Alexander Clayton, and her cousin Geraldine Horn, who all share the same birthday. Send lots of love to them.